Most of us want power. We want the power to be able to make the changes in our lives that we desire, to bring our desires into being, to be the person that lives in our hearts that we are trying to get into the outside world. And having power, being able to express power, has to do with whether we believe ourselves to be powerful. The subconscious mind, the hidden mind, as I like to call it, is where a lot of our beliefs about ourselves live. So if our conscious everyday mind is saying, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to be this, I want to be that, but it's not happening despite our best efforts, there may be part of our hidden mind, our subconscious belief about ourselves that doesn't buy it or that is afraid to become more powerful. So if we know that being powerful, which for our purposes here just means having agency and the ability to act and craft and create what we desire, if our power is inhibited in some way by fear or an unconscious belief, then maybe we need to dig around and see what that might be. What might we be afraid of? Uh, what is there to be afraid of when it comes to having more power to change your life? Are you afraid of your desires? Perhaps. For my part, I was afraid of the responsibility that would come with being more powerful. I was afraid of letting myself down and I was afraid of letting other people down. I did not trust myself with power and this is big for me i did not trust myself with power i did not trust myself to fully show up for the things that i said that i desired so how do we deal with that well one bringing that fear to the surface in some way is is uh usually a good starting place for me uh this is why i'm such a huge fan of work that directly targets the subconscious mind, like the tarot. It speaks through symbolism and archetypes. Um, but this is also where routine and our physical disciplines and the architecture of our daily life can really serve us. So if I know that there is a deep part of me that desires to be more powerful, to make more change, to have more agency, in creating my life and becoming the type of person I want to be but I also know it's not quite happening yet for some reason there's some kind of hesitancy there's some kind of fear there's some kind of not readiness that's okay acknowledging that that's okay that that's there is helpful we don't need to be in resistance to something that is within us we need to meet it and understand it and then move forward so a way to approach this, let's say if, if you resonate like with what I've experienced, which is fear of not being able to fulfill the role of responsibility, to fulfill the roles of power, um, you need to build trust in yourself. And building trust in yourself is going to be sort of the fundamental act of self-relating that's going to help you in your transformation and in your journey. And one way that we build self-trust is by keeping our commitments to ourselves, listening to our intuition and listening to our heart. Keeping commitments to ourselves, even very small ones, can be really huge. So if, um, and then also being able to recognize what commitments we've made out of sort of a sense of external obligation or what is a commitment that is really like for us and helping us. Um, just so for example, when I was 2012, my life sort of like, hit the rock bottom and I was trying to reassert agency. I was trying to gain self-trust back. I was trying to assert some mastery and control and agency over my life. I did like, I think the first workout thing I did, I believe it was a sort of 30 day challenge. I was like, okay, four weeks of five workouts a week, body weight. They were all less than like 20 minutes. It was like planks, body weight squats, that sort of thing. And doing those workouts was a way for me to prove to myself that I could show up for myself and what I said I wanted. And so 
understanding that that was the motivator, not even a specific physical result yet. Like, yes, I, I did want to get in shape. I did want to be athletic. Um, but a huge part of why that was so foundational and so helpful for me when I was starting out was because it helped me build self-trust. And when you can build self-trust, you can start to build power. They're deeply, deeply related. And it can be really hard to trust yourself. There is a lot of messaging in our world that tells you you can't trust yourself and that you have to cross-reference and outsource every decision you ever make. Um, fear of making the wrong decision. My cat is trying to get into my gym bag. Hold on. I completely lost my train of thought, but, you know, this is Murphy, frequent guest star, co-star, valuable input. <laughs> this is the great thing about pets, too, right? Is pets, like, they can teach you so much about yourself. And I've had pets for a long time, and there are always these little mirrors um, of where I'm showing up for myself, where I'm showing up for them. Am I keeping my promises in terms of, like, am I staying aware of the connections and the relationships around me that nourish me and, and give my life meaning and like or am I getting stuck in my head and overly analytical and spinning about things that don't actually matter that much um this this little dude matters this little dude matters uh, he's such a mirror for me like when I am in a funk like he starts acting up he starts yowling and and, and right now he really wants my attention so I'm gonna give it to him very soon um but all this is to say that if you if what you say that you're wanting is power, what what are we actually talking about? We're acting. We're talking about the ability to act, to have agency on the things that we do, and to affect them. And if we're experiencing that that's not happening for whatever reason, it's probably because, or it's often because, in my case, the subconscious or hidden mind is at odds with what our conscious mind wants or believes about itself. So. If we have rituals, routines, practices where we can sort of build trust with ourselves by committing to it and showing up for it consistently, that's a way to build trust in ourselves. And the other thing, this is sort of its own topic, but is if the activity itself is challenging enough as exercise and training can be, especially when you're starting out and can be progressively so, is it will... <coughs> with its inherent difficulty, introduce you to those fears. It will bring them to the surface so fast. You'll find yourself like, you know, doing your push-ups or whatever, and then you're gonna they go, oh God, I can't do this. Oh my God, I'm so weak. Those thoughts will let themselves be known. And that every time that happens, that's really good. It's really good to <coughs> have an activity, sorry, to have an activity where those thoughts can show themselves so that you can meet them and go, hey, I know you're scared. I know this is hard, but you can do it. You're doing it right now. And thus start to create this positive feedback loop of acknowledging fears, acknowledging hesitancies and trepidation and anxiety and all these things, um, but not giving them a solid foothold, not letting them stay buried and hidden in your mind and in your heart, bringing them to the surface and directly confronting them. And then again, that's why I love about training is it will show you that you are capable of things that are so much harder than you think you are capable of. And um, that will that is that is a lesson that we can practice over and over and over again, and it is one that has served me really well and helps set me up for the stuff in life that's like actually really hard. <laughs> um, so training is is practice. Strength is practice. Your physical modality, martial arts, whatever it is, can be practiced in so many ways. A practice of building self reliance and self trust, and that trust will help you continue to step into taking responsibility for being more powerful. And this is sort of the last piece of this, is that when you start to actually become more powerful and actually affect things, you will have to, that is what taking on more responsibility is. If you wanna build something bigger, you wanna build a company, well, guess what? You're now responsible for the people that you hired. You are now a leader. And that, that, you know, that may be many, many more steps up the ladder of where you're at now. But that is why building, like, you, you can't be powerful without being responsible. And the people who are powerful without being responsible are, you know, they're doing a lot of damage, <laughs> generally speaking. You don't, you don't want to be that guy. And I think most good people know that, and we don't want to be that guy. We don't want to be that guy. 
So, but we can't let that fear of being that guy stop us from growing power, from growing responsibility, from growing self-trust so that we can step into these roles and take ownership of ourselves. Um, you are the greatest asset that you have. You are the gift to your own people and to your own community. And if you are not developing yourself, if you are not harnessing the incredible gifts and talents that you have, you actively are letting the people around you down. If you are not harnessing your heart and developing yourself in accordance with it and not being what you were called here to be, you're letting people down. And that, for me, that's my take. You don't have to, that's how I feel. You don't have to take that. But that's how I feel about myself is it is all about me because it's also all about everybody else. I have to be the most vibrant, most true, most free version of myself because that's who I'm here to be because that is the person that is going to contribute the most to the world that she lives in, to the people that she loves, to the people that she wants to serve. And that's where self-development is like, and being a strong individual is about service ultimately, but not in this like altruistic sort of fake, like just be a service, like don't, don't have your own needs and desires. Desire is bad. Like just subliminate yourself. Like, no, that's not it either. But when we fully own our talents, our unique voice, our unique skills, and we're striving to be the most developed version of ourselves possible, that is the person who has something to give. And then we get to be in deep connection and relationship and support of the world and the people that we love. Have an awesome day.